Hello, people of Earth. This week, we are taking a Thanksgiving holiday break from Last Looks, and instead, we are re-releasing a How Did This Get Made classic episode on one of the best movies of all time. Well, I should say one of the best movies about face swapping ever made. That's right. You've already clicked play, so you know that I am talking about the 1997 action thriller Face Off. We are joined in this episode by special guest Randall Park, and you will soon be hearing us discuss Nick Cage's tongue suck, face waterfalls, and so much more. Now, there is no last looks today, so I wanted to make sure that you could still prep for our next new movie episode. Next week, we'll be kicking off the holiday season with the 2009 made-for-TV movie, the dog who saved Christmas. Oh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for you to watch this. It stars Dean Kane. <laughs> Mario Lopez is the dog. Yeah. Uh, there are no reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, but there are five sequels. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know what you're in store for. Let's go to Letterbox because Letterbox gives us a little taste of what we're in store for. Caitlin writes, it's Home Alone, but if Kevin was a dog. And Ellie comments, I missed the first 20 minutes to go in the shower, and now I realize I should have stayed in the shower. <laughs> you can stream The Dog Who Saved Christmas on Peacock, Freebie, Tubi, the Roku channel, and Pluto TV, or just rent it on Amazon Get into it. Get into the holiday spirit. And if you have any corrections and omissions for our last episode on Munchies, don't worry. We'll cover Munchies and the dog who saved Christmas in our next Last Looks episode. You can still submit corrections and omissions on our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm or leave us a voicemail by calling 619-PAUL-ASK. Remember, uh, I am in a holiday movie. Bring me home for the holidays. Uh, I uh, am in this movie called Family Switch on Netflix. Check it out. It premieres November 30th. Uh, I think you'll like it. It's good for the whole family. And uh, now enjoy Face Off. Arguably the best movie about face switching ever made. We saw Face Off, so you know what that means. What's a nigga grow a baby in his belly? Rock a rhinestone vest while ripping Justin to Kelly. Or maybe see a burlesque show with Nick Crow. And take a boat with speed to hitting cruise control. J-Man, Big Paul, and the beautiful Jewel. Gonna take you from the goob all the way to the room. Ran the games of Street Fighter, helped to blow off steam. Just a sucker punch the odd life of Timothy Green. Shock needle the bird demic, how we staying alive. They call it in the badass, and he's on the line. Cranking 88 minutes, cause they cool, cool as ice. ice. Cause a bad Jim Varney Looking kind of nice. Paul and Joe getting little. Well, Jason is getting laid. June is making sure all the monkey shots getting paid. They judge a bunch of movies while they're making the grade. Here's a real question for you How did this get made? Hello, people of Earth! And hello, people of Largo! Welcome! to another live edition of How Did This Get Made? We are very excited to be here in our Los Angeles home at the Largo at the Cornet Theater, which is a great place. If you're in LA, go see shows there. If you're not from LA and you visit LA, come see shit that happens here. Literally, crazy shows with amazing people. I don't know when you're listening to this, but just Google it and you'll be like, oh fuck, that happened? I could have seen that? Yeah. It's crazy, uh, really cool stuff. So definitely do that. Now, please, without any further ado, let me introduce my co-host, Jason Manzoukas. <laughs> What's Welcome. up, jerks? Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, Jason. Oh. This, this movie has been... This has been our biggest argument. Should we do this movie? Should we not do this movie? Yep. And the audience decided the last time we did a live show that we should do this movie. Yes. And you... I conceded that I would do it. And I am here to say it is, it is just as fucking awesome as I remembered it being. So, as I said at Con Air, this should be called Thank God This Was Made. <laughs> Because this movie is fucking rad. So you know where Jason stands. Um, 
It wouldn't be a live show if one of if one of our members wasn't here, and that's what's happening tonight. June is not here, uh, unfortunately. Uh, our our beautiful baby has a temperature. Yes, thank you, and thank you for acting like that's the first time I've given you that information. <laughs> We do a pre-show and the audience is aware, but they really played along for you, the listeners at Good home. crowd. Look at how Hot. hard they're working for Hot you. Hot crowd. Hot crowd. Hot crowd. So uh, June will be joining us midstream to uh, give her thoughts, her feelings. Um, I can just tease it by saying that she had no idea what this movie was about. <laughs> and literally turned to me and said, is this really happening? So, but uh, without any further ado, we have a very uh, special guest tonight. Please welcome Randall Park. <laughs> welcome, Randall. Oh, yeah, please, right there. Come on. Sit down. Oh. Hey, everybody. Welcome, Randall. Hey. So exciting. So excited to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. This movie was so horrible. <laughs> I was so great. incredible, too. Horribly great? Yes, yes. It was incredible. This is what I'll say about this movie right from the get-go. Um, and, I, and it's now proven in some of my notes. A lot of it has been improvised. Like um, Nick Cage and John Travolta like, threw away the script yeah. and just... Improvised. So Wait, any, but like, there was a script. <laughs> and by the way, the screenwriters do the DVD commentary. We'll be playing a couple of clips from that Ooh, good. as they as they kind of tackle some of the questions here. So if you don't know, uh, for those of you who've never seen Face Off, and, and you should, it's about a criminal and a con. Uh, oh no, a criminal and a cop who switch faces. Yes, <laughs> that is. It is about. This is a movie. <laughs> This is a movie. Guys, this fucking movie is great. This is a movie that begins with the murder of a child. This movie begins with Nicolas Cage shooting a child with a sniper rifle now, and only it was a gets it was a better. It was a it mistake. It was a mistake. He did not mean to shoot the child. He meant to shoot... Travolta and yes. he went through him yep. into and his child. child. <laughs> yeah, into his child. The child's head. That's which where this is movie starts. Um, and by the way, there's a couple things about this. Um, for those of you in LA, it seems to me that they're at Griffith Park, they which are. is yeah. which is a very open kind of family park. And Nicolas Cage seems to be about 50 feet away. <laughs> On like a grassy knoll. On a grassy knoll, he has a tarp over his sniper rifle, <laughs> which I don't understand why. Uh, because he's very prominently seen because he's smoking oh, and yeah. standing next to it. He's not in the grass. <laughs> he's not in anything Which that I know. Which means noticed. at some point he set up that sniper rifle. <laughs> he assembled it. <laughs> in full view of people who are probably like throwing a fucking frisbee to a dog wearing a bandana. You know, and he's like... Putting and it then together. And shoots a child. <laughs> And then, guys, he shoots a child, and the movie begins. The cold open is infanticide. I, um, for the, uh, the audience here, I've just put up, uh, I put up, by the way, this is a... <laughs> my, this was, is the official police report. <laughs> yes. This is the damage report. Carousel sniper victim murdered 9 September 1991. Now... Paul, if you, if, yeah. may I read this? Please. <laughs> this is what the police file the police says on the computer. Report. This is what the police wrote in the computer about this child's murder that begins this movie. And, and by the way, this, I want to so remind you, know, you this the, movie is great. The, the police report doesn't even have, like, a death scene photo. They just kind of got his yearbook photo. Yes. Yes. Like, uh, like... Says, Carousel sniper victim murdered 9 September 1991. Damage report. The boy died in the arms of his father, <laughs> FBI agent Sean Archer, on the carousel in Griffith Park. Caster Troy had intended... It's, it supposes the intention of the murderer... <laughs> 
Casper Troy had it. Casper Troy had intended to kill Sean Archer, but the bullet traveled through him and struck Michael in the chest. This the, kid is dead. <laughs> By the way, this is you know John Travolta can call this up in the middle of the movie, but damage report doesn't seem to be a, pu- no. a police term. Does, what's the damage report? Let's quick. Let's look it up in the damage reports. I think you could probably just. Flip this whole thing around and say, name Michael Archer. <laughs> An incident. Car- uh, sniped on a carousel. Like very sniped. A, you wouldn't <laughs> snipe. Sniped. Sniped. That's what yeah, we yeah. would say. Yes. Yeah, sniped, sniped on a carousel. They yeah, no, this would be they so much. Yeah. They wouldn't list it like a, a more like it's listed like like very provocatively. Like, yeah. you know, like Oh, it's like carousel. written very well. I'm surprised it has no mention of uh, Archer's weird porno mustache. <laughs> <laughs> To show time. Uh, I also right to so clearly serious. show time. I, they, oh. I mean, by the way, it's a movie, great fucking beginning. This movie, it uh, really like started out of the gate. You're like, whoa, what? I will say that I I I, I really do like this movie. I bought it on iTunes uh, instead of renting it, and uh, and when I watch we it, we get it. Scene, you're rich. <laughs> I already pre-ordered Second Best Marigold Hotel. Suck it. Uh, I don't even care if I know how much it costs. Uh, I'm going to buy it. That's just, be- that's just a service your Dame Maggie Smith fetish. Of course. And why shouldn't I? I work hard. Uh, <laughs> but to me, like, when I watch this movie, like, I was like, oh, well, they're not going to kill this kid. Like, they, like, you don't think they are going to do it. I at least, I really did have that reaction. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, wow. Oh, I'd forgotten that that's how this started. And yeah. I was like, oh, right. <laughs> this movie tells you straight out of the gate that it's bonkers. <laughs> no, yeah, you were, you, were starting at su- you were starting at a 10. And I would say it, it, it never lets down. Oh, uh, no. Never. Uh, wh- who would you say? Well, obvi- well, we'll, 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 we'll go into it. I mean, I, there's so many questions I want to ask in a general sense. Who played the better version of the other person? Uh. I want to. I want to get into that because I have opinions about that. But basically, all we know is that after this assassination of his son on a carousel, yeah. uh, Travolta uh, becomes a humorless uh, head of a secret task force sent to just basically take down Nicolas Cage's character, Castor Troy, that, who that's appears it. to be like a f- famous domestic terrorist. But he says, I heard him say in the trailer, for hire. Yes. Well, in the movie, he is working. No, he is working for somebody else because the Pollock says, oh, we're never going to get that money from, like, the Libyans. Like, he says. Is that it? Okay. I never understood, like, who's hiring him? It's 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 an organization. It's also like a highly covert secret anti-terrorism task force. And all they do is destroy everything. (laughs) I also had an issue with the highly covert secret organized task force. But when shit went down, they're like, all right, let's bring in every major criminal to our office. Yeah. Like, let's just show them where we're working. Like, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't bring them to the secret headquarters. It's like Batman going, all right, we'll just lead them in. We'll just, yeah, we'll have have tea and coffee in here. (laughs) So, like, they didn't have a place. So he's... His wife is Joan Allen. We got to get it. She's Joan. Joan Allen. Joan guys. Allen. She's incredible. Amazing. But I gotta guys, say, hey, I on, feel uncomfortable. Hey, guys, give it up for Joan Allen. Yeah, get that. Like that was that was tepid. We said we already said the movie start. The movie starts at ten. Kid gets killed. Then it goes to like a 20 because then it's like this opening sequence that is like the end of most movies. That's right? why right, this movie's right. awesome. I would argue this is like one of the defining Nick Cage performances. Like oh, It was incredible. It's yeah. really... This is the beginning of like... Oh, no, it's not because he, like, he's always doing cuckoo, cuckoo crazy stuff. But this really is like this period of Nick Cage I feel like firmly establishes him as just... Going for it. <laughs> no, I mean, from the moment one, like, he's singing along with Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. He is massaging a girl's ass. And, he, like, and he, it, it's, it's awesome. 
It's everything about this opening. He has guns with dragons on them. <laughs> he when flirts he, with a girl by saying, how would you like to suck my tongue? He says that to multiple people, and multiple people take him up on it. I don't think that would be sexually enjoyable in the least. To have yeah. your tongue sucked? And no. he does put it out, and she sucks it. No, I don't uh, want the that. The peach line. What was the peach line? He said, it I, was... I can eat a peach all day, and you're like, yep. peach? And he said, a lot of people, and that other girl in the other scene was like, I thought I was your peach. Yeah. So he's like, also like, that's his only line. <laughs> his only line is, you're a peach, I can eat a peach all night, and suck my tongue. And everybody from Gina Gershon to like that random FBI agent is like, I'm in. But if it's working, why change it? Why change it? Seriously, right. I'm going to start saying those words. I'm going to start using only those pickup lines. Um, I just, could eat a peach all night. Ow! Why? Just to... I'm getting slapped so much. In an effort just to slightly move this show forward, because there's so much... Like we can spend much. so much even in the opening of this movie... I just want to just set the basic premise like, yes, so the fucking beginning of the movie is crazy. There's helicopters, plane chases, people are getting shot in the head multiple yep. times. Uh, yeah. There's, uh, uh, I, and I, wrote, I had this too because they, there's that, there's the whole uh, uh, opening scene, which is the assassination of the child. <laughs> then there is a, a, a crazy te- uh, priest, he, he, he uh, arms a bomb, so now there's a ticking clock. Uh, humps the girl who's singing the Messiah, who's part of the choir. Then there is a chase. There is a Hummer and police cars and helicopters on the tarmac chasing a plane down. And it's a huge set piece. And it is, I looked, I stopped the thing, and it was minute 11. <laughs> and it's like, God damn, this movie is amazing. And the movie, at that point... I appeared to be, like, I was like, the, the, the status bar, I was like, oh, I think this movie's like seven hours long. <laughs> and we are only like this far it in. It is long. The movie is the long. Is very long. Very long. Um, Worth it. So uh, the, other, the, other the, the other theme it kind of sets up early on is that everything explodes. No matter what. Yes. If it's a box full of eggs, it's going to explode. <laughs> they, they, the jet goes off course into a jet propulsion laboratory yep. that also happens to be on the tarmac of an airport. I don't know if they do it that close to each other, but yep. sure, I'll buy it. That blows up like a fireworks factory. Like, yes. everything is Huge exploding. Huge explosions in this movie. Very satisfying. Uh, and this is, we should say this is a John Woo movie, and as such, has all of the hallmarks of John Woo uh, films, with all of the crazy doves, all of the uh, standoffs, all of the... Everything that is John Woo is taken to <laughs> the extreme because it's Travolta in the cage. Unhinged. Un- yes. like, is, this, is this a question? Is this his first American movie? No, it, 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 no, no, it's not. Is it? Hard is it, Target, maybe? That is that the... There's uh, one right before it, I is think, that the right? One? What is it? Broken Arrow. Yeah, Christian oh, Broken Slater. Arrow. Broken Arrow. Which is right? also a Christian Slater... Uh, Travolta joint. <laughs> <sighs> Somebody just said it's good. It's great. Guy, calm down. I I described because you just started at it's good, and then I said it's good, and you went it's great. <laughs> so you just doubled down. <laughs> um, I, I, I described that. the performances in this movie to be kabuki-like <laughs> in the sense that everything is just like, ah! Yeah! Like, it's a full body. Well, no, no, Everything Paul, is... A- the movie's about faces. Yes. <laughs> so, as such, I guess... People are doing a lot with their faces in these movies. I mean, it is nothing... No... <laughs> like... Let me just show you, uh, this is jumping ahead, but uh, I just want to show you like the level of, uh, of acting that's going on here. This is just later on in the movie, but we don't, the plot wise, it's okay. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, just so we know, yes. is this Nicolas Cage as Travolta right now? Yes. Okay. So yeah, we'll get into all of this. You get it, they change faces, but, but this, is a, this is just a good, um, like, so if you can imagine it, if you've never seen the movie and you're listening at home, John Travolta 
is performing as Nicolas Cage. Yes. And Nicolas Cage is performing as John John Travolta. Travolta. Now, it's two bananas people (laughs) trying to out-bananas each other. Now, the thing that I also... You're welcome. The thing, before we even play this clip, that I want to even bring up, and I brought this up uh, in the last episode, is that Nicolas Cage finished shooting Con Air and within 12 hours was on the set of Face Off. <laughs> shooting... Those 12 f- hours? Wig construction. <laughs> Those 12 hours were deconstructing one wig and building the other. You have to. Yep. Um, yeah, he and needs, the first he needs to turn scene, around. The first scene that they shot, you would think, oh, well, we need to shoot the scene where... Nick Cage is being Nick Cage and John Travolta is being Travolta because that's what their baseline will be for the rest of the movie. No. The final scenes of the movie are the first scenes of of this movie. So the boat scene was the first scene that they both shot. The boat chase? The boat chase. Oh, if you are concerned that after airplane and helicopter chases (laughs) with Humvees there might not be a boat chase. There's a boat chase. There's a fucking boat chase. So... To me, I think like I'm even more impressed because here's two actors that didn't even get a chance to see what each other was doing before they started copying each other I would argue, for the thrust of the film. I would argue the movie is better for it. Potentially, yes. Um, here we go with just, again, not, we're not jumping ahead to plot. We're just seeing the level of acting or power acting. That's what I would call it. Power acting that goes on. Well, uh, here's some poetic justice, sir. Castor Troy is dead. He got killed trying to escape from marijuana. Where's his body? I, I want to see his body. It hasn't been recovered yet. It hasn't been recovered yet? <laughs> Get the LAPD on this. So, I know it's small to kind of see, but that's about the level every scene hits. <laughs> like, that kind of encapsulates... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they, they are both going in and out of shouting in, a, in sing, single conversations as if that's how we all talk to each other. I feel like Travolta is genuinely trying to do like a Nick Cage yes. a little bit, right? I think he does a good job as But Nick I feel Cage, like right? Nick Cage is like, fuck it. I'm just going to do like a version of myself, just a little toned down. <laughs> Which is still enormous. Enormous. It is enormous, yeah. (laughs) So again, just to reiterate, the premise is these two guys switch faces. Whole, and now, I mean... I mean, there's so many places to go. Yeah. Well, uh, well can we talk about the science? Faces. Yes, the science. The, the science, science behind it. Yes. Of Randall, we can 100% talk about them. If we don't, shame on us. Yeah. The science, I, first off, they're different blood types. Yes. I don't know. I, which, I mean, is a, not, which is a big plot point. I, I, it's a huge plot point. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm not that, you know, I'm not that knowledgeable about. You're science. Not. You're not a scientist? But, uh, I'm not a scientist. Okay, right. well, it's But I'm assuming... We, we always want to assert whether people I'm, are I or are not, not scientists. I am not a scientist, yeah. but I'm assuming that different blood types... Well, I know uh, one of them's O and one of them's AB, and I actually looked this up because I was like, I gotta look this up. <laughs> one of them's O, sure. and that's the universal one where yes. you could like... Yeah. Yeah. And one of everybody. them's AB, and that's the one where you can only kind of... Right, you can only give to A B. Right. So one of them's got to die. Because they're wearing the face of the other person. <laughs> yes. I guess that's true. <laughs> I would also argue that if you were just to cut around your face, it doesn't just get easily sucked off. Like no. you, like when I smile, this skin is attached to muscle. Um, no, no, no. It's it's barely. <laughs> Most mostly, your face is attached. Right around the rim. <laughs> and so you have to cut the rim of the face because that's where it's the strongest. The rest of it is just kind of like sitting atop mush. You know, uh, if you pull um, really hard on your nose, your face will come out quite a bit, but it's, it's held in around the rim. So you cut that rim, guess what? Face off. <laughs> um... 
guys, they, they don't got, encourage me. I want to, I want to, I want to play two questions about science. One is this first, just John Woo. John Woo does not talk di- very much during the director's commentary, but when the writers who were on this ask him a question about face swapping, let's see what he has to say. Here we go. Now, John, I know you would never say so at the time in the production, but did you ever have a moment when you felt like this was crazy and it was never going to work, the whole idea of face swapping? Did you ever have doubt? No, no, I have never had any doubt because I believe um, it could happen in the near future, you know. And now it can. <laughs> so now yeah. it can. <laughs> John Woo on board. Now, here is just a little bit more science. And are we to believe, are we to believe that this technology is in the hands of the FBI? Well, no, it's in the hand of an independent contractor who's oh, working with the FBI. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought uh, they had the, the tech the, the somehow. The premise of this is crazy, and they run by it so quick. So not all, they're switching faces, but then they're also getting intense liposuction, uh, hair, like if, yeah. if the one has more hairy chest, the other one... Hair plugs. They literally plugs. said hair plugs. Yes. Yeah. Their body's changing, their voice is changing, which is a thing. Um, everything is changing, and they basically say, um, well, with the pain meds we have now, you're back up on your feet in like, uh, ha- you know, half hour. Here's and the you thing. You get a broken nose and you're not on your feet in a half hour. Here's the thing. What this posits on a biological level is so impossible. <laughs> so as to necessitate that you don't look at it at all in the movie. It needs to be glossed over as quickly as possible. The person who delivers that information, she delivers it like the Micro Machines guy. She's like, and we're done. All right, yeah, we got it. And then then they're like, they do the buzzsaw around the faces. They put the one face on Travolta. Bing, bang, boom. Now he's in prison because who cares? Uh, the whole time, the, prison. the whole time, I was like, "There's got to be a side effect. There's got to, you know, yeah, they, they nope. have to do be. There has to be something." Like and literally, the up. one side effect was like, he was like, "My face itches." Yes. <laughs> oh well, hey, you know what? And that, that was it. That brings me to my point about this. So they put in. They say that. Um, well, I, I have two points. They have to make sure their voices match. So they do that by yeah. planting a microchip in their throat. Now listen to the writers talk about that and then I'll bring up my point. So here we have the laryngeal implant. We stuck in the word microchip as if that actually had some meaning to what a device like that would be. And we never changed it and survived through all these drafts. We never came up with anything better. No one ever questioned it. A microchip stuck in anyone's larynx. Larynx. I don't think it would change their voice or anything. It'd probably just give them an infection, but there it is, the microchip. So that was it. It was a placeholder term that just, yeah. Here's the thing. A microchip. D- didn't bother me at all. Now, I'm well, on board for this movie by now. You know why? Because they killed a kid. <laughs> then they had an action sequence, and I was like, I'm back. The, the this problem, movie's amazing. The thing, the thing I want to talk about about that, so they go, uh, be careful, because <laughs> right. if you get a uh, hit in the throat or you have a harsh sneeze, the microchip won't work. Violent sneeze, sorry. Then, Relax. for the rest, for the rest of the movie, John Travolta, as Nick Cage, is getting punched in the throat repeatedly with no ill effect. Not a single like, ill effect. And also, this movie takes place during allergy season. Of course. <laughs> And you, would, and you would think people would get sick with all of, all of the hand over the face going on throughout the whole movie. They're rubbing their hands on their faces. That is wildly unhygienic. <laughs> uh, that was improvised, the hand over the face. Oh, really? No. Oh, that wasn't in the script? This, here's Academy to drag, to drag your fingers times. across people's uh, face? Here, by the way, if you don't know what we're talking about, this is very visual. If but John like... Travolta wiped my face in a scene in an improvisational way, I would be like, get the fuck away from me. Um, this is, again, just to talk about this is like where he all the He does it to a child. Um, this, this is amazing. Um, 
So, oh man, this is the intro. This is the intro. Well, this is all. This is a more of a visual one for our audience here of all the face so if waterfalls. So, listening to the podcast, you don't get it. Face waterfall. 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 It's a lot of face waterfalls. Wait, and you know, you know what's not in there is the one that he almost gives Gina Gershon and then thinks better of it. Oh, right. At one point, he's like, oh, no, oh, I'm not. He's like, oh, no, that you're would not, be weird. You're not my wife. <laughs> oh, boy. I almost fucking face wiped you. I feel like that is the gesture that, um, that, um, like, that a fucking, uh, a character in, like, a, 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 a movie that had, like, magic would use to, to kill people. Would be like, <laughs> like you become weak. You know, just like sleep. That's what they they just dragging their dirty fingers down each other's faces. No so thank gross. you. No thank you. Oh my gosh. I, I feel like we should maybe call June at this point and we've talked for a little bit. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. It's on you. It's on I mean, you could be on you. Hey, June. Hello, how are you? Hey, June. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Sorry, it's just on me. <laughs> you can see Jason, too. Hi, Jason. Welcome, June. <laughs> so, June. Good to be here. A couple thoughts. Just, just hit us with where you're thinking. We've talked about a couple things, but... Your initial reaction to the film? Talk- what? Um. For those of you who can't see it, June just did a face waterfall. Perfectly timed as we just played a montage of face waterfalls. <laughs> you are connected to us. Yeah. Wait, pa- wait, Paul, you keep saying face waterfall? Yeah. <laughs> As if that's what it's called. I think it is. Is that what it's called? Is that a thing? Face, Face waterfall? waterfall. Who see? Wait. Come up with a better term for it. Wait, did you make no, that I up or is it really term. called what I that? Thought, what I thought you said was face paw. Oh. Face. Which face. also made sense. Yeah. No, I made. I, I, it, no, I did not make that. I mean, did yes, I did make that up. You it, did. It's in my notes. It's face waterfall. Did so that co- is. Are it. you coining this phrase right now? Face waterfall. I'm saying how this get made coined it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's get it up on a t-shirt, assholes. June, talk to us because you didn't know what this movie was about. Just any thoughts that you have. I loved it so much. Um. Okay, a couple random thoughts. And, and I'm so sorry if you guys have talked about this already. Did you talk about the wardrobe of the FBI agent slash flight attendant on the first flight? I, I'm going to say, of course not. <laughs> well, okay, well, here's my question about her. And I'm sorry, I can't hear everybody that well. But here's my question. Was she supposed to be like a honey... Was it supposed to be like a honeypot situation? Like she was supposed to sort of be attracting him? Or was it just like she's just, a, she's just working as a flight attendant undercover? So you're wondering what her assignment was exactly? <laughs> well, I guess I ask this because if she was supposed to be like a honeypot, she was wearing... I, I don't think... Honestly, I don't think you could put more clothes on her. She was wearing a ribbed, yep. like mock, mock turtleneck, like a mustard, a mustard ribbed, yeah. like heavy mock turtleneck. Yeah. Well, June, I think you need to remember that that Joan Allen is the sex pot of this movie. Okay, because on top of the on top of the mock turtleneck was like a heavy a heavy wool blazer. Yes, heavy. I think it was a matching heavy. blazer and pants. Yes, and pants and like a belt. She 
shaking her head in disgust. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't June, believe it. June, um, let me ask you a question so uh, before you continue. Um, would you be attracted or would you be interested if a man asked you to suck his tongue? That was so upsetting. <laughs> so... Well, and I guess that, that was my question about her. I, I didn't know because it almost seemed like she knew exactly what she was going to have to do. And she was up for it. And she was going to like play the part. But if that was the case and that was the outfit she chose? <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was shocking. It was a real shocker. Well, I mean, she does a very bad job of it. She sucks his tongue a little and then is like, immediately outs herself as FBI and is killed. That's true. So that, by the way, the second murder after a child is this female FBI agent at like minute 10. Who is thrown face first out of a moving airplane. Yes. Um, performance. Okay, a couple other thoughts. Yes, please. Well, I have you guys. Um, have you talked about, okay, when Nicolas Cage escapes from sea prison? And we'll get into sea prison, but yeah, this is good. You tell us and we'll go back. Go ahead. Am I jumping ahead? Please, jump ahead. That's fine. Jump ahead. Okay, so there's an, there's an elaborate sequence where he's finally able to, you know, get to the rooftop and he realizes, like, oh, God, I'm, I'm at sea. You know, I've really got no idea. Like I'm, he's on, like, a prison oil rig. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just this like huge wide shot and he's, uh, you know, it's, it's so upsetting. And then he, there's a helicopter and there's this, uh, the sequence goes on and on. And then finally he just jumps into the water. So he jumps into the water and the next shot is of him <laughs> arri- like walking <laughs> to a valet stand. He's, yeah. at, he's at Spago, basically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How did he get there? <laughs> He swam. <laughs> also, this is a prison that, like, they said, like, nobody knows about. Yes. Amnesty International, or I forgot all the, like, the organization. Nobody knows yep. about this. Where it's was it? It's highly yeah. secretive. And he swam to Spago. <laughs> um, June... June, you will, uh, you'll appreciate this, June. Just a little fact about that prison... Uh, the prison, John Woo recruited actual convicts, ex-convicts, to be extras in the prison scenes. And all the boots in from that were from Super Mario Brothers. What? what? Yes. I'm um, blown away by that. Yes. Uh, the boots are from Super Mario Brothers, and they caused many a mistake. Um, the, the magnetic boots are from the Goombas costumes in Super Mario. They're made of real metal and were super heavy and caused a lot of problems for the actors and stuntmen. Because they were in metal boots doing full-on fight scenes. Look at this woman. She has to go to the bathroom and she's stuck. She can't get out. She couldn't get out of that door right there. Oh, man, I bet she's going to take a hot deuce. When she comes back, we'll ask. June, what else do you what else do you have? Well, I'm sure you guys went over this, but it, I mean, I, I, and this has probably been discussed, but it seems like and and look, I love a body switcheroo movie. I love like a, I really like a Freaky do. I Friday. June, it. I think it's so fun. Like Judge Reinhold and Fred Savage, and vice versa. Exactly. I love watching a good old fashioned switcheroo, but it did seem like you know. It did seem there, there was a flaw to this logic of, well, it has to be John Travolta who jumps into his body and because he knows him so well. It, it seemed like actually because of all of this personal history and all of, you know, everything that's happened to him because of this man, he's probably the one person who shouldn't do it. But they're the same height. <laughs> 
They're the same height. I will say that John Travolta is constantly shocked that he is Nick Cage. Like, yes. oh, he's always scary. Every time he looks in the mirror, he pulls out a gun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time he sees himself in the mirror, think about this. He's seen the face of the man that murdered his son in the first scene. Uh, anything else, Jim? Yeah. Oh man, um, June. How did you feel about? Um, did you? How did you feel about? Like, did you have any reaction to? Because Paul said you did not know that this was face switching. So when they started to go about switching the faces, how did you feel at that point? Oh man. <laughs> I well, I couldn't watch the actual face switching. That's where I, I drew the line. I said, you know what? I can't watch this. I can't see. This. I couldn't believe it. I mean, they gloss over that science so quickly. I mean, I just couldn't believe they were just switching faces. And then I just couldn't believe it. Um, it was pretty shocking. It was pretty shocking. Because I, I have always heard a face off and you see... I mean, it could mean so many things, you know. So to actually find out, no, they're gonna they're gonna switch faces. They're actually gonna switch faces. It, was... It's even more shocking in the fact that we did an episode of NTSF based on Face Off that you were in that referenced this I movie. Didn't get it? Yeah. Get that right. <laughs> One of my favorite moments now that I'm just musing on it was when, <laughs> when Joan Allen tells uh, John Travolta that they're gonna, he's going to get his face switched back. And he's really excited. And she says, yeah, we have a surgical team coming in from D.C. <laughs> <laughs> Who are they? I mean, they're some of the best guys because guess what? They get it done. <laughs> Can you D.C.? Just... Okay. Can you just... Um talk very briefly about the, the role of children in this movie and the violence around them. No. 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 I honestly, it was, it was, I mean, I watched it with Paul. It was too much for me to bear. It was too much for me to bear. The opening scene was too much to bear. It was just, oh, oh the kid with the Walkman. Yeah, that was upsetting. And then also, I'm sure you've gotten into it, but the daughter's reaction to seeing her dad her dad, you know, kind of come on to her and act super aggressive was just so, I mean, there's just, it, it was all, um, it was all really, really disturbing. But healing for them. What's so Ultimately, fascinating is yes. Nicolas Cage, where, I mean, Travolta as Nicolas Cage infiltrating, going and living with Joan Allen and uh, Lolita in that house helps them heal as a family by, by having sex with Joan Allen and, and, and paying attention to her and talking to the girl and like defending her against um, the one Masterson. of the Masterson boys. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Nicolas Cage, who is a what terrorist is for hire is like, you know what? I'm a gonna, great dad. I'm going to knit great the, dad. I'm going to knit this family back together. <laughs> he did it. He did it. Oh yeah. June, I know it's hard for you to hear, so uh, we just wanted to check in with you and hear some of your musings. Yeah, last last question. So do you think ultimately cuz there's one beat where and maybe you've talked about where Nicolas Cage is at the gravesite of the boy that he killed. Um as John and Tra he yeah. does seem. I'm sorry, no, not as John. Tra oh yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, as John Travolta. Yes, okay. So it seems that he feels remorseful. You you think he feels bad for killing Travolta's son? son. Yeah, I do think he does. I think yeah. he does a little bit. I think so too, because he was not his intention. And also, yeah, later he makes the point. He tells Tra uh, Nick Cage or Travolta as Nick Cage. Yeah, it was a mistake. So should we say Travolta Cage and C Cage Volta? 
it's too, as, uh, it's too hard to keep track of. It's too hard. I want to just, well, because we, I know it's hard for you to hear, but I... We, we, June, I, can I ask you a question? And I, this is for June and Paul together. If at the end of a tumultuous, violent series of events befell your family, and at the end of it, Paul came home <laughs> with a strange child... That's exactly what I wanted to talk and about. Said, <laughs> I'll tell you what my reaction would be. Yes, go. Okay. <laughs> and that that is that is June. The last line okay. of the movie. No. Okay. Why not? Okay. 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 <laughs> oh, so what? We're gonna raise this kid now because the other kid's dead? Okay, why not? Okay. I guess we're doing this. I'm Joan Allen. Also, like, no discussion of the impact it has on their other daughter. No. The, the other daughter runs I, right to his face and gives him a face waterfall. Face waterfall. Yeah. Yes. Right out the gate. I would argue that this kid would be better served in the foster care system That's than true. with this family. All right, June, thank you so much. We're going to continue talking here. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, there. Love fresh off the boat, Randall. All right. So they switch faces. They go to this prison, which the prison is insane. They have magnetic boots that lock them to the floor, but they don't seem to use that. Like, they let them fight <laughs> willy-nilly. <laughs> Like, they really do, but he goes in there to, like, um, to get this information, and I would say he that... He knows that, that Travolta switches faces because he knows that Nicolas Cage has planted this bomb. Yes, that's going uh, off in the eight only, days. For why? Who cares? That's Who knows? So that's a very long time. Yeah, why yeah. would you put a bomb... Like, anyone could find it in eight days. And you don't, <laughs> like you don't find out... Like, hours is more of a, all right, I buy that, but... You don't days. find out until the end, too, that it's because there's going to be Supreme Court justices there. And so that's and the act of terrorism is like, we got to get rid of three Supreme Court justices. And I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know much because about Because then government. the incumbent president can I, nominate people that you're like, oh, is that the, what's well, going to on? Me to me, it's like, I don't know much about Supreme Court justices, but I don't think that they... You, you sure? I know a little. Uh, I know Clarence Thomas totally put that pube on his diet coke. Yep. Uh, <laughs> remember that? That was like this dumb thing. I guess it wasn't dumb. It was sexual yeah. harassment. But it was. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's just a pube on a coke can. Um, but he, uh, the, but to me, it's like there wouldn't be that much security there for Supreme Court justices. They don't travel with like. Secret Service, do they? I think they probably do. Really? I think Supreme Court justices have security. Right? Wouldn't they? Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> I was not, you guys seem to be split on this. All I'm saying is he could have gone in like two days before, not like eight. But he goes down there and he pulls the move that I think is the worst. If you're undercover and trying to pretend that you're somebody, he <laughs> yeah. thinks, I'm Caster Troy. Yeah. I'm Caster <laughs> Troy. <laughs> he yells that for a long yeah. time. time, yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about the fact that when um, the dad from Fargo, who is um, uh, Travolta's boss, is killed. Yes. Um, Who just so happens to be having a heart attack. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He appears to be being buried in a beach church. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Some the, sort of church that's on the beach. On and this the is beach. like a policeman. This is like a blue collar, like elderly police guy. He's and he's like, like a, I want like, I want to be buried like Moondoggy from Gidget. He's like a legendary figure in the police force, yeah. and there's like 25 people yeah. there. Yeah, like a poorly like, attended service. It's the weirdest, <laughs> it's the weirdest setup. And that we just need to get them by the water. Like yeah. that, that's really the only reason why it was where there. doves are for some reason. Lots yeah. oh, of doves. That's where the doves are. Yeah, you would think that they were like, get these fucking doves out of here. <laughs> no, and they should kidding? be seagulls. This they really John should be Wu. seagulls. John Woo's like more doves. <laughs> Give me more doves. Um, 
So basically, uh, this is on the DVD commentary, but uh, early on in the jail sequences, the writers had written a scene in which Castor and Pollux, Pollux is Castor's brother. brother, who knows all the secrets, that's why you have to go to jail. They said they wrote this a scene that talks about their past and what that turned them into a life of crime. Nick Cage threw out all of that and improvised the backstory and said that he's a bad guy because his father made him wear a pink dress. <laughs> which was also cut from the movie. <laughs> So that's the level in which we're working. Uh, <laughs> Very big scene. Nah, let's do this instead. And then that was cut out. So there is nothing really in that scene to show a connection. Can I ask, a, uh, this is a genuine question yeah, I have. Because I'm thoroughly confused. The, the, the bald guy yeah. uh, and Gina Gershon's character. Yes. Oh, yeah. they're, they're siblings, right? They are. Yet they have no, wait, a wait. really Are like they? sexual yeah. like kiss. No, yeah, you're right. I saw that too. The brother, their brother and sister, and she, he kisses her hard. Yeah. Like wow. Hard. Are, are they the brother and sister? Yes. Yes. Because he says when he's interrogating him, he's like, "I'm gonna make it hard for your sister." Or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Why do they kiss like that? <laughs> That made, I wrote down the exact same thing. I said, I feel like that might fall hard. into bad guys are incestuous. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know how bad these guys are? Even like the morality of incest means nothing to them. <laughs> it was really gross, and I really respected Gina Gershon's character. I was part. into it. <laughs> I couldn't quite get a handle on I mean, this movie is comical. It would be as if the three of us all had guns, two in each, you know, two and one in each hand, and we're shooting each other here, and we miss. <laughs> like, nobody, it, nobody can ever hit a target ever with bullets. Like literally, they they do a raid of the bald guy and Gina Gershon's apartment. The cops have like the, they have they have a leg up. Oh yeah, uh, and and an apartment full of windows. I don't think anyone gets killed. Nobody. Only by very close range shots yep. do people get killed. Yeah, no, they, dudes they, drop out of the ceiling with machine guns and are like, Brrr. nobody gets hit. And then somebody's like, Pew. and that guy's like, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> it is shocking. Uh, the, amount of gun, the amount of gun play to number of people that gets killed is, is crazy. <laughs> it is a shameful waste of ammunition. Um... <laughs> So, you want to know why that they never shoot each other and kill each other. By the way, the end of the movie in which <laughs> they finally kill Nick Cage, improvised, right? Everything improvised uh, in this movie. Uh, but here's a great point. They, Nicolas Cage realizes why they never can hit each other. And he believes, he goes, oh, I get it. Archer and Troy are in love with each other. What? Wait, so, wait, what? Nicolas what? Cage believes... That they can't kill each other because they're in love with each other. So this is a romantic comedy between <laughs> these two gentlemen? According to Nicolas Cage, he viewed this film as these two men are in love with each other. That's why they can't kill each other. I, I buy it. <laughs> I guess so. Well, there's also a lot of... <clears throat> obviously, because of the face switcheroo, there's a lot of um, looking longingly at themselves in the mirror there is like a very what's happening is very interesting it is both it is it is a, it must be challenging their sense of self well, and, and I, as such could lead to i love myself i look like that i must love that even though that is not me technically it is me well, so maybe they are in love with each other because also, they're walking a mile in each other's shoes, that's for sure. <laughs> the, the original ending, by the way, took place in a mirror factory. Oh, wow. <laughs> what, I, what, I mean, yes. That's interesting. I, I love that. Uh, I want to I see that. One of the best sequences in the movie is when they're both on either side the of mirror. a mirror. Yeah. And they're both looking at the person they want to shoot, 
but they're actually looking at themselves. Well, I have oh. this like, in, in, indulge me for a second. Yes, I have please. an interesting kind of, I, I'm probably reaching here, but I had just seen Going Clear, the HBO yes. documentary yeah. about Scientology. So I couldn't watch this movie. I saw it right before watching this sure. movie. I couldn't watch it the perfect, without... The perfect uh, <laughs> appetizer for this meal. I could not watch it without thinking... Or, or, or searching for kind of sci- Scientology references. Oh, and I thought, this is a Scientology movie <laughs> while I'm watching it. So. Yeah, oh, I like this. The death of, the, of, my, uh, of, of Michael, the yeah. kid, that's like his past trauma, right? Right. The, his the, engram. That's like his trauma. That's yeah. like what he's working out. The the um the the the, the switching faces yeah. having to face himself essentially right right that's like auditing right <laughs> that's like auditing he the two guns in the hands that's the cans of the e meter oh! right they're on a boat that's the sea org I love it. And at the end, he becomes a thetan, an operating thetan. That's my uh, theory. Wow. I don't know. And also, and also, not that this means much, Danny Masterson. <laughs> Noted Scientologist. Sure. Well, here's the thing. In a weird way, I mean, this movie posits that, it doesn't posit, it does. Like, at the end of the movie, he just basically takes... Caster Troy's kid. He's like, oh, okay, back, back to normal now. Yep. Family's back. I got one. I got one back. Like, yeah. you, you took my kid. I now want to back. Your kid. I want everybody here to imagine what that kid's going through. <laughs> everybody he's known his entire life is dead. His mother, his uncle, all the other bad guys that he's apparently growing up in a loft with <laughs> were murdered in front of him. Okay. Now, Travolta is like, uh, you're going to be my kid now. I don't know where he gets them from either, because it seems like he got the face-off operation. Joan Allen doesn't go to the hospital to pick him up. She's like, oh, well, come on, he's ready. And on the way home, he's like, oh, I picked up, uh, you know, like, I picked up Chinese food. He's like, oh, I picked up this kid. Like, it was like, he just picked up this kid. This, This movie... The, the, um, the sequel to this movie should be the point of view of that kid and he's living in like some nightmare world where he's like, this is, they just want me to be the dead son. Yes, because he like, does. This cause... kid, poor Adam, is going to live the rest of his life being called Michael. And by the way, he should have good feeling for that because the minute... Uh, Travolta, Cage as Travolta sees him, he goes, oh, Michael, yeah. and grabs him. Like, so is every child Michael to him? Yes. Because that's not healthy. I nope. don't know, but at the end there, like, you feel like, okay, maybe this Adam kid is like, you know, he's probably going to go through some issues, but then you oh, know he's sure. going to be okay as soon as he gets the face waterfall. Oh, yeah. He's like, yeah. fine. The minute I walk into a strange house and they're like, can we keep him? And everybody's like, of course. And Travolta's like, By the way, the same ending of Goonies when they fucking take Sloth. Like, Mom, Dad, we keep him? Yeah, it's a fucking animal. Sloth is, how dare you? Sloth is not an animal. Um, That kid is going to go up to Michael's room, look around and be like, Oh, yeah, they go, we already got a room for you. Yeah, yeah. That kid's life is a nightmare. That girl comes up to him and he's like, like runs her fucking fingers down his face. I'd be like, and I'm out of here. I also, I would rather live on the street. I I also want to, than with this family. But how about this? But by the way, his mom is no better because his mom basically, Gina Gershon? Gina Gershon sees uh, Cage and is going to fuck him. He like kind of pushes her off because he likes Joan Allen. And then she's like, oh, okay, well, here, meet your kid. But wait. So, like, that kid was just waiting outside the door. Like, she was like, oh, and now you come in. Like, it wasn't like, like, it was like, well, I'll fuck him, and then I'll bring the kid in. So just wait. You wait here. <laughs> Listen to your mom get I feel get like boned. the kid waits behind a wall a lot of this movie. Like, at the end, too, he's just waiting until, like, Travolta brings like, him out. <laughs> I like, too, that she was like, what, you want me to just jump on top of you? And he's like, what? And then she's like, jumps on top of him, and he's like, is this what you want? I was like, what is going on here? 
Do you guys think that the title Face Off was ever in the movie? <laughs> I don't remember I don't, anybody I don't remember. saying I don't, it. <laughs> the I words do not face, remember. Face and off together. Oh, really? I don't. Well, re- yeah, I don't recall that. I don't recall it. Uh, to answer the first question, um, Face Off was not ever mentioned in the movie. Uh, Nick Cage improvised this monologue, which we're about to hear. So, once we kidnap Super Cop, then what? Tiny surgery. I'd like to take his his face off. Excuse me, I have to use the little boy's wee-wee room. Cat. You want to take his face? Yes. His face? Oh. The eyes, nose, skin. And that is how you improvise in a movie. That does, knowing that that was improvised feels like, yeah, 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 that's great. They just that's face crazy. off a million times. Poor Nick Cassavetes. So it has to be like, wait, please don't put this in the movie. <laughs> please, you promised me you wouldn't put this take in the movie. Also, they don't take his eyes, right? They take... No. no because, yeah. like, when he's just... Like, when, like, Nick Cage has his face... Like, when he comes yeah. out of his coma... Yeah. And he has, like, ketchup all over his face. Yeah. He's watching a video, remember? Yeah. yeah. Like, so yeah. his eyes are there. I'm oh, sure. No, because, again... No, he's smoking a cigarette a without a face. Small, he's <laughs> yeah. It's just a plastic shield. Uh, I mean, it's, it's like the worst, ma- the worst mask you could ever buy in a Halloween costume. It, it was ketchup. <laughs> It really was. Oh, gosh. Again, um, I want to reiterate, incredible. this movie is great. It's incredible. <laughs> Before we go to the audience and talk about a couple of things, um, I want to just talk to you about the actors that were considered for these roles. Ooh. Oh, my God. Okay. Schwarzenegger and Stallone. Awesome. 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 Wow. Who do you think would play the hero and the villain in that? I think Stallone is the is the Travolta yeah. and Schwarzenegger is the Cage. I agree with that. Harrison Ford and Michael Douglas. <laughs> well, this is a Michael Douglas produced movie. Well, yeah. Michael Douglas was originally going to star in this movie. That's what got uh, John Woo invested in it. Everyone got on board. It was going to take place in the future. They took away the future stuff. Uh, and Michael Douglas then dropped out. And uh, yeah, so basically... Michael Douglas to take out the futuristic stuff. And, uh, yeah, so that was, I mean, it was basically Michael Douglas's, uh, you know, I, little I would have taken Michael Douglas and Harrison Ford, but they're not. What's great about this is that it's so hammy. Yeah. They right. are mugging so hard, both of them. Right. You yeah. know, Michael Douglas and Harrison Ford could have been his real snoozer. Well, Harrison Ford would have been the good guy, Michael Douglas the bad guy. Yeah. Like, right? Mm. Then uh, Bruce Willis and Alec Baldwin. I'm wow. very on board for that pair. I really like that yeah. movie. Uh, here's another and one. And I would go either way with the roles. And the last two are pretty great. Jean-Claude Van Damme yes. and Steven Seagal. Wow. That would have been one, the best version. That would have been really great. And finally, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Amazing. I mean, that would have been a great movie, too. That would have been pretty great, <laughs> By too. By the way... Why shouldn't we just make don't, all don't. of those movies? Yeah. Why, like, why don't we just hire everyone? Like, I would watch a trilogy I of would these like movies. Completely. Completely. I would like to take all of those and just shoot one scene from this movie with each of those pairings. Um, originally, Nick Cage turned down the role because he didn't want to play the villain, but then was told he'd actually be playing the hero because the face thing. He's yep. like, oh, I'm in. Uh... Uh, all right, let's let's go to the audience and, and the, let's go to the audience here. Uh, if you have questions that we, uh, we, I know we haven't addressed a lot of things, but we've 
This is a long movie, and there's a lot of questions. So we are going to give away, for good questions, uh, some toys from Mezco Toys. We've got the Sons of Anarchy stuff in here. We've got a bunch of cool shit in here. All right, so here we go. What's your question? Right here. Sir, your name, who would you like to see as a pair in Face Off in your question? Uh, you don't have to hold on to the mic. <laughs> uh, my name is Lance. Uh, I would like to see this movie starring Gary Busey and Kevin Costner. <laughs> Great. Wow. And actually I'm my very qu- into that. <laughs> and actually my question was going to be living or dead any actor, who would you like to see as this pair? Who would you be your caster and who would be your archer? Ooh. Living or dead. Hmm. <laughs> this is going to be a real this is going to be a real thinker. Get a toy for that question. Oh. Get a plushie. Plushie yeah. Sons of Anarchy. I'm going to say Nicolas Cage as caster still and then replace Travolta with Nicolas Cage. I was just going to say I would say that. That's, that's where I'm at. The only way this movie could be better, Double Cage. Thinking, I'm still thinking. I'd like to see like some like really like serious, well respected like Sir Ben Sir Ben Kingsley Ooh. and Meryl Streep. <laughs> well, I think that I'll, would be amazing. Then I'll go for the old version of Face Off and say Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart. Nice. That's a good. That's. By the way, that's an Academy Award winning movie. How about, right how about a sequel to Face Off, which takes place like 40 years after the first one, and those actors play the same two characters? I'd be in. I'd be 100% in. All right, here you go. You're, sir. You're, you're pairing. Your question, go. Um, yeah, as far as pairing, I, I think uh, I'd be on board. I, I think you got to go female. Okay, great. Um, Sofia Vergara <laughs> and. Oh, Lucille Ball. Ooh, wow. And wow. Sophia Vergara and Lucille Ball. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, and I love it. That movie is rad, especially because if we shot it now, Lucille Ball would be a corpse. <laughs> well, he we said living and dead, living or dead. Uh, I want to see the female version. Okay, your question. So, well, actually, it's a nice segue, because I felt gypped. I, Ooh, really? Yeah, at the end of this movie, I feel like, you know, we had fat guys becoming skinny, skinny guys fat. Uh, no taboo left unturned. That little boy shows up at the house, and I think to myself, you know who he's the same height as? The dead son. Why aren't we digging up the dead boy? Amazing. You get a toy for that. This guy gets it. We've got the technology. Let's fucking slap a new face on this kid. I love they can't that idea. fuck him up any more than he's already fucked up. No, that's and, a great idea. And you're right. They, they were the exact same height, so that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's a great... <laughs> Maybe they do eventually do that. They just have to get him up into his room. Okay, yes, ma'am, your question. Your pairing and your question. Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton. Nice. <laughs> and why didn't the wife notice when they were intimate that it wasn't her husband. They've been married for at least 15, 20 years. Did they change everything? So you're saying explicitly that his dick must have been different. Well, I was going to say, this movie, this movie shows no restraint, but because I feel like but in that category they did because they didn't have like one of those scenes where they there was looked no at sex dick. Well, they didn't look at their dick and go, whoa. All right. Like, like, you know, I feel like that's always in these body switching movies. They check well, out no, their dicks. Well, no, because they don't switch bodies. They just switch faces. So no, they but still they got their bodies, own dicks. But their bodies Wait, right? have totally no. changed. No, okay. Their like, bodies like, are, like, sorry, yeah. Their bodies are totally changed. Yeah, because they take the hair out of the chest. But they, they don't the change. But that's all they said. The hair, the hair out of the chest and an abdominal plasty. Right, oh, the yeah. The dicks are the same. They should have said, they should have said... They should have said they are the same height and have identical genitalia. <laughs> and you, you guys are negligibly different in height, and your junk looks pretty the same. So, <laughs> how many people That's... here think that they kept their same dicks? By applause. 
How, how now many? wait, now I have a question. Wait, how many people think they, they did not keep, or because that is going to interfere with your question or no? Go ahead. How many people think they did not change dicks? <laughs> okay, now, this one's for the ladies. <laughs> Do you think you would notice if your husband's dick was markedly different? <laughs> while They've you're been married being, for a long time. Now keep in time. mind, you're Joan Allen. So I don't know if you're, like, blowing anybody. And they hadn't had a successful date night in a while. Yep. Yeah, it's probably, been two months. Yeah, they, two they haven't months. haven't had sex for two months. What? Ladies, would you recognize... She's a doctor? Two? Okay, so this girl here is saying that Joan Allen is a doctor. So she's medically So she examining. must know about dicks? So she's a dick wait, specialist. Wait, but she's examining yeah, his she's dick every time? she's all day long just fondling dongs at the hospital. <laughs> what, is she a perv? Ay, ay, ay. She's I'm some a, kind of Joan Allen dick doc. She gives him Don't a full, get me wrong. I'd like an exam. A full ball exam. That was such a good question. I'm going to give you this Michael Bay book that we got. All right. All right. You're shaking your hand. That means that you have a good question. All right. Here we go. All right. You're pairing your question. Oh. Wait, you had your hand up. No, move. I moved. I moved. What, what the fuck are you doing? What, you had your hand raised. Paul and came up shaking, to you and, and you shit your pants. Sir, here we go. What do you got? You got a notebook out. I, I know you're not going to let me down. Yeah. Uh, can I do my uh, pairing? Yeah, please. <laughs> I would say uh, Jason Statham and uh, Liam Neeson. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. And then uh, my question is, when Castor Troy wakes up in the, the uh, hospital, he's unguarded. There's, uh, no, <laughs> there's no medical staff. And uh, he looks outside his window, and the only thing he can see in the darkness is John Travolta's face. That's a really good point. Oh, it, when it, you mean John Travolta's face in the face juice? Yeah. It's saline. When, yeah. It's saline. By the way, they key, yeah, why would they keep that out in the center of the room? <laughs> they would maybe put that in the fridge, you'd think. Like, it may go bad. What should I do with this other face? Oh, just leave it in the face juice. It's fine. Should anybody be watching him? He's in a coma. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, he's let's like, all go party! It's like... Yeah, like, they should have maybe watched him because that face-off thing woke him up. I mean, clearly. They also should have, like, I feel like... Here's the deal. If I'm Travolta, I'm like, hey, guys, keep my fucking face under lock and key. <laughs> Like, and, this and, shit is pretty fucking and why did to it me. Have... Like, <laughs> lock it up and somewhere why... safe. And Don't why... leave it in some fucking juice. Don't throw my fucking face in some apple juice and leave it next to fucking Nicolas Cage. And why did it have to, why did it have to be so secret? Because no one was going to get into that prison to tell Pollux, Right. Pollux, by the way, was instantaneously suspicious of him. Yeah, yeah. As if to think, I wonder if this is a face switch. <laughs> by the way, the smartest he just, character. He just called me bro. My brother doesn't usually call me bro. <laughs> face switch? <laughs> Probably um, face switch. Uh, I guess I'll marry Emily Mortimer. Well, obviously we had an opinion about this movie, but there are some people who had a different opinion. It is what? now time for Second Opinions. This is a second opinion. All right. This is... There are some great ones here. Uh, amazing ones all out of the gate. I'll just start with this one from Juanita Clifton. She writes, Good movie for older people. Not little kids. Oh, I do dislike Cage's character. He's a real scumbag. Five stars. From Mylene Munoz, she goes, It's very beautiful. I love it. It's what I wanted, and I'm glad I found it. Thank you so very much. I will be doing so recommending of this. Very beautiful piece. I will be doing so much very recommending? Yes. Yes, that is, uh, that is that. 
um, is that? <laughs> this one from Danny, one of my favorites. Danny wrote this back in 2000, simpler time. Um, this blasts Die Hard right out of a building and sends it flying down 33 stories. It jump kicks the Matrix and breaks its back on a granite wall. Wow. It grabs Cliffhanger by the throat and throws it onto a pile of jagged rocks. Yes, this movie kicks major buttocks. It's a story of an FBI agent and a terrorist who change identities to get a first-hand glimpse of how the other lives his own lifestyle. This used to be my favorite flick for about two years until I watched it so much that it just played out completely. Uh, this, his, his amazing review includes the part where he doesn't like it anymore. <laughs> Amazing movie, flawless, until I watched it so much that I realized it's terrible. Here's another one. If you don't like this movie, you're a wimp. Five stars. I thought this film was great. I'd never heard of Nicolas Cage before. What? And now I'm a big fan. What? Oh, my God. Um, and then... Um, That's shocking. And then this one. Can you imagine a world in which you've never seen or heard Nicolas Cage ever do anything, and then you saw this movie? You'd be like, oh, what's happening here? Is this guy okay? Was there not like someone on set being like, hey, hey, guy, cool it? Um, this one is titled. Words can't say how great this movie is. All in caps, a lot of exclamation points. This was my favorite movie ever. It was pretty nasty and cool. My little girls thought it was sick. Wow. Five stars. Who are his little girls? Yeah. I think that's supposed to be read, my little girls thought it was sick. Obviously, um, this movie, don't feel dumb that you like this movie because it got a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Because it's awesome. <laughs> Again, I didn't think we should do this movie for a reason. But I feel awesome. like we, we did it for the right reasons. Yeah. Uh, Margaret Cho, in this movie, simply because John uh, Wu's daughter liked her, and said, Dad, you need to hire her. And he said, okay. Really? That was, yeah, that was what he says in the wow. DVD commentary. His daughter likes Margaret Cho. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll put her in the movie. That's awesome. Yeah. She and has that one great moment where she's like, did you get surgery? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah that's like, a great... What? And he's like, to get that stick out of your ass? Yeah. That was a great moment. Zing. Great, great but comedy moment. There's so much that they improvised. Face waterfall, the face-off monologue, the ending with the spear gun, the everything. Oh, Please, they, you mean during the boat chase? Yeah. Oh. You mean like the 30-minute boat chase that happens? <laughs> when one honestly, boat jumps through another boat? They're both in competing scarpas or whatever they are, scarabs? Yes. Uh, I, I am... Uh, scarpas that's where, uh, that's where I checked out of the movie. Like, and I remember watching it originally. The boat chase doesn't do it for me. Nah, it's pretty great. <laughs> I'm like, how that is where you're wrong. As, as June and the, said... The whole time I was thinking, Sea Org. <laughs> That's all I was thinking. June, June said to me, how many times are they going to face off? Are you serious? She thought they would just face off once. She's like, they're always facing off. Yeah. The whole movie. Wow. The whole movie is face-offs. Uh, <laughs> well, I want to show you guys the end scene that was not in the film. Oh, wow. um, so this is the alternate ending scene. Um, we'll watch it and then I can kind of describe to you those that are not here. Um, let's take a look at the alternate ending, which is pretty amazing. So it ends the same way I imagine they adopt this kid. It's nighttime. Joan Allen's got on a very sexy outfit. Uh, it's Watch almost you. like Gandalf's cloak. She, no, it's fucking Galadriel, man. So she Joan is Allen is Galadriel. And uh, so she's primping the bed, getting it ready for bed. That bureau is distracting. It is. John Travolta is at the sink. Sean? Ch 
goes to check on him, puts his head down in the sink. <gasps> he comes up. I'll explain this to you at home. Okay, so let me explain what just happened here. So, and we need to talk about this. All right, so what? this is the original ending. So John Travolta is looking at himself in the mirror. He's like, oh, God, it's been a crazy couple days. And um, crazy week and a half. And um, this, is a, this has been a real yipes. Puts his head down to be like, oh, fuck it. Looks up, and he is Nicolas Cage. Now, Joan Allen comes in, sees the reflection of Nicolas Cage, and goes, ah! So they are sharing a hallucination. Right? I guess... They are and, sharing a... It's a shared hallucination. And then he looks back, and it's John Travolta. So my question is, now the studio made John Woo cut that because he said it was too ambiguous. I don't understand what it even is ambiguous about. Like, he's still Nick Cage? No. But is he? What? <laughs> like, will he always be Nick Cage? How, wh what do you mean? You don't mean, you don't mean, you, 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 are, I mean, you, he, are he, you theorizing that they didn't switch the faces back and that it's still Nicolas Cage as Travolta, Cage no, Volta? I'm hypothesizing that a little piece of Nicolas Cage is still in Travolta, and I know that's impossible because it's only about the faces, but <laughs> well, I, I feel like think... he went dark, and now he'll always be dark. Although he was dark in the beginning, too. So. Well, I do think they've now walked a mile in each other's shoes, as I said, and, and I feel like Tra Travolta has a little bit of cage inside of him now, now for sure. They, they, maybe they've both, throughout this whole, or, whole ordeal, yeah. they've both been traumatized right. by this experience. They both need to jump on an e-meter <laughs> and be audited again and start the whole process over. Wait a second. I are, you a saying that are you saying that Caster Troy is a suppressive person? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an SP, clearly. Yeah. Wait, no, but, but my question is, why does Joan Allen see it? My question is, where is Shelley Miskevich? <laughs> She's in a prison camp. Um, no, here's my here's my genuine question. Do you think, audience, Joan Allen prefers sex with Travolta, Travolta, or Cage as Travolta? Cage as Travolta. Right. I would actually have liked a scene where. Uh, K, where Travolta as Cage fucked... Um, uh, no, Cage is Travolta, you mean? No, oh, no, no. no. Uh, oh, oh uh, Gina Gershon. Gina Gershon, and yeah. she's like, oh, that was terrible. <laughs> like, why is that so why are you crying so much? <laughs> <laughs> I thought and who's the... Michael? <laughs> <laughs> and don't you think it was... Uh, just one thing to talk about before you end, too. Like, wasn't it a telltale sign that, like, Travolta was evil when he started traveling with the two gangsters. Like, yeah, like, yeah in the hospital. Like a cop. It's like, oh yeah, now they've got these two gangsters. Like, yeah, you're a fucking bad guy. Like, there's no, there's no doubt about it. Well, the idea that he could come home, it, it, it's what I do, and I do love this movie. And what I love about it is they do the face swap, and whether it's Cage, uh, 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 Travolta in Cage's body with his Nick Cassavetes, Gina Gershon, or uh, Cage and Travolta's body with his family, nobody bats an eye. Everybody's a little bit like, hey, you okay? Yeah, what do you mean? Nothing. <laughs> because for as much as Travolta was to know Cage, he doesn't really seem to get what's going on. Nope. Like, he'd only go, you, I busted, I mean, Sean Archer busted you. Yeah. <laughs> or he'd go, or like, when she's like, well, where are you going? And it's like the, like the son's birthday, and yeah. they need to go to the graveyard or whatever, and he's just like, oh, what? Uh, okay, bye. And she's like, don't try and get out of it, mister. You know, everything's like so conveniently like is solvable. But like, he's a stranger. Even though he has Travolta face, he's like a stranger to well, Joan Allen. To me, he also drives past, yeah. like he drives past his own house. And, but it, it didn't seem clear to me that he was even driving to the house. 
Like, it seemed like he may have just passed it by accident. Like, because he overshot it. It didn't yeah. seem like, yeah. nah, 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 nah. like he just uh, way overshot it. And she's like, oh, I figured you wouldn't know where your own house was. <laughs> it was she's, only a matter of time before you forgot where he lived. She's completely confused, and then he drops that line on her. Right? He says, I, I hate to see you leave, but I'd love to watch you go. Yeah. And she's just, like, totally charmed. Yes. Yeah. Because guess what? Not a lot of people are giving Jonah Allen ass yeah. compliments. By the way, did you think he was going to fuck the daughter? I thought he was going to have Oh, he to totally fuck the daughter. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Right? <laughs> all right, so... Right? <laughs> obviously, I think we all recommend seeing this movie, right? I, I, it's incredible. A hundred percent. It's the best. So, I think we did it justice. I think we did... Randall, uh, anything you want to promote, talk about? Uh, uh, well, uh, we're on a show yeah, together called Fresh Off the Boat. <laughs> Super funny show. It's on You're ABC uh, at, uh, on Tuesdays at 8, and it's a great show. And you can catch up on the ABC app. Just go, go check it out if you haven't seen it. <laughs> Jason? I did an episode of Community that's online right now on Yahoo, <laughs> which um, everybody should go watch. Um, I don't know. Nah, that's about it. Yeah. I got nothing. I got, we talked about Fresh Off the Boat, so we did it. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh... uh the How Did This Get Made podcast? Oh, that's good. Yeah. On Earwolf? Definitely and if check out that. anybody's in New York, we're going to be at Irving Plaza. Yeah, but you can't come to it. Oh, it's sold, sold out. out. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> and if you are listening to this and you plan on coming to see us in New York, don't buy any of those scalp tickets. We'll be back. You don't have to pay 150 bucks for a ticket. That's ridiculous. Yeah, don't buy scalp tickets, guys. Come on. Let the real fans in. Screw those scalpers and stuff up. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, a big shout out and thank you to July up in the booth. Everybody over at Earwolf. Uh, give it up for Nate Kiley. Uh, give it up for Avril Halley. Give it up for our new t-shirts, which you can buy right now in the Earwolf store there. Uh, no holds barred t-shirts. Great shots, everybody. Thank you so much. Give it up for Randall. Give it up for Jason Ben Thank you guys so much for coming. Good night. How did this get made?